I'm Shalom Akiyam. Hey, it's your brother Ariel from GMS Tampa Bay 12 and GMS 13 Rulership 3. Also, GMS 13 Rulership 4, which is my backup channel. Back at you again with another live lesson through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. And of course, before I start, I do want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Racha Kodash. Call Haloyim La Allah Hayyanawa Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Racha Kodash. And for those that may not know, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which the word ignorantly calls God. His true name in the ancient Paleo Hebrew would be Yahweh, which roughly translates to He is or He exists. The existing one, if you will. He to be is Yahweh. And we call on Him in the name or Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shai. And Yahweh Shai is the name of the only begotten Son, which the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. His true name would be Yahweh Shai, which roughly translates to He saves or He delivers. So it's Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. Those are the names you need to call them for salvation. And we call on them in the name of the Holy Spirit, Bahashem Harachach Wadash. And I also want to give double honors unto the apostles and elders of GMS, Great Millstone. And salute to you brothers out there pushing the word out in truth and sincerity, week in and week out, day in and day out, without wavering in the sound doctrine. And Shalom to you brothers and you sisters that just may be listening and learning. Peace to you as well. And, uh, uh, so, you know, <laughs> was it yesterday? Um, sometime yesterday, you know, our brothers already know, uh, the, uh, the uh, Iranian president, uh, <laughs> he was put to death, basically, man. You know, and it's hard to really tell. They, of course, the, the media is making it look like it's just an accident, no foul play or whatever the case may be. But, you know, we look at this thing in the spiritual eye and it's obviously, uh, you know, we smell a rat, so to speak. You know, no pun intended. You brothers know what I'm talking about. We smell a rat, a gutter rat, in the midst of all this. Now, whether the man actually died or is just a, a FF or whatever the case may be, or if it's legit, we don't really know. But we do know that this is a made. This is a, that's a major event. The, the president of a of a major uh, country like that. When we say major country, it's not really a major country, but it kind of is because on a, a, you know, they're one of our major enemies, so to speak. When I say our major enemy, I'm talking about the United States. You know, we don't consider ourselves part of this. We just live here. But they're one of the adversaries of the U.S. And out of the blue, you know, Sunday, yesterday, you know, he was caught in a helicopter crash. <laughs> you know, just, it, it's just, things like that just don't happen. Okay? So we know we're now waiting and we're watching very, you know, um, closely to see whether, you know, what this turns into. You know, and it's, and it's obvious to us that it's going to turn into some sort of conflict one way or another. Somebody, you know, somebody's going to have to pay for that. You know, and, and they're already pointing the finger saying this and that. You know, pointing the fingers at the U.S. And, you know, there's, there's um, you know, headline, article headlines, you know, pointing the finger at the West. So we're going to see more of this start to come up on the horizon. And we don't really know what it's going to turn into. But this is all leading to... World War Three, you know, as brothers always been going into World War Three is is the war to end all wars, the war to end all wars. Excuse me, okay, and it's going to turn nuclear and it's going to end with Yahweh Shai and the angels doing what they need to do, okay. But this is what it's leading up to. It's leading up to a major conflict, and you Americans are ultimately going to after you're going you're going to feel the brunt of it. Don't think that you can't be touched over here like everything is sweet just because we over here in the, in the free world. Okay, it's not sweet. As you can see, the prices of your everyday goods have skyrocketed to a point where they're almost just unobtainable. And this, this, the morality of this country has went down the deep end. Okay. <laughs> you know, just look at look at what they what what is publicized and and what is protected in this world. All right, things that are contrary to righteousness. But this is the world that we live in. This is the country that we live in. And so ultimately, it's going to lead up to a major conflict. Right? So we're warning you brothers and you sisters out there to just kind of keep an eye out for these things because we don't know ultimately who's going to pay for what and who's, you know, they may have they may have a draft where a lot of, you know, you, um, you um, able-bodied American males and you females are going to have to get drafted into a war. This thing is ultimately going to turn nuclear. So for those of you, those of you, those of us that stay here in the United States, hey, you got to keep that shit in mind. All right. Before I read the scriptures, those of us that know the truth, we we aren't scared of that because we understand the Lord's mercy. 
So we understand what we need to do to obtain salvation from that. And we're doing that. And we encourage you brothers and you sisters to do the same. Keeping the law, statutes, its commandments to the best of your ability. And of course, calling on the true names of the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son. If you're not doing those things, then there's really no guarantee that you're going to receive salvation. Okay, there's no guarantee if you do those things that you will receive salvation. But you have a better chance doing those things and receiving salvation than not. Okay, and we have faith in the words of the, of the, of the scriptures, the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, that if we do these things, that we shall never fail, right? Let's get that in the book of Joshua. And then we'll get some scriptures on uh, some of these nukes, you know, and the, and the, the future. But let's start here in Joshua chapter 1, verse 8. It says, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but, shall, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. Right. And that's what we do. We we do our best to please the Heavenly Father. We know we're not perfect, but we are doing our best to walk within the the righteous footsteps laid before us, the, the path that was laid before us. So it says, For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Right. And that's ultimately what we want. We want success. Right, but not success in the, in the sense of, oh, I'm a millionaire now. But no. Success and prosperity in the sense that we, our lives and our souls have been spared from the destruction that is pro promised to come upon this land. That's what we're looking for. We already know that this place is done, son. So, you know, there's no point in trying to uh, um, make a life here or trying to save our lives here. No point anymore. You brothers and sisters already know that. So we do what we need to do to, you know, basically get through the day by day. But as far as making a, you know, a name or a life for yourself here in this world, it's not really, it's not really worth it. Okay. We, we, um, gave our lives up for Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay. Not conforming to this world. Let's get that in the book of Romans. Romans, the 12th chapter. Real sec one second. Romans the 12th ch chapter in the first verse it says I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of the Most High that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice right so by us going on the highways and hedges that's us putting our bodies up as a living sacrifice by us putting out these videos on the internet with our showing our faces uh, um, you know speaking you know as we do saying the things that we say not that we're saying anything in, in, incorrect or anything illegal but it's it's an unpopular opinion when it comes to this world to say it like that. All right, so the world looks at us like we're crazy by doing what we're doing. That's us putting our bodies up as a living sacrifice. Because Yahweh Shai, he was a sacrifice for the nation of Israel, right? And he did what he had to do, and here we are today. All right, with, you know, under the grace period, all through the Spirit, all thanks to our Lord Yahweh Shai. So we have to reciprocate that same sentiment back to the Lord. We have to put our bodies up as a living sacrifice the same way he put his body up as a sacrifice for our sake. Okay? And so we do the same thing for Yahweh and of course for the elect, whoever they may be. It says that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the living power, which is your reasonable service. So it's the least thing that we can do is put up our bodies up as a living sacrifice by what? Preaching and prophesying unto Israel. That's the least thing that we can do, and brothers are doing it, okay? Expecting salvation. We're doing it and expecting salvation. We hope for salvation, but ultimately it's an, it's an expectation at this point, all right? We're not just sitting here thinking, and, uh, if I do these things, it may be. No, we have 100% confidence in what we're doing and what it, and what is on the horizon if we continue on in this, on this path, salvation. So it goes on to say verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. Don't conform to the ways of this world, but actually be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So when you hear these scriptures, your mind is renewed. Okay. When you when you hear these scriptures, it's going to ba basically plant a seed. And when that seed, you know, germinates, so to speak, it's like, it's like a new mind. You have a new mind now, man. You have a new way of viewing and assessing life. Now that you have the understanding of the scriptures, you wouldn't have that understanding if you didn't hear the word. Faith comes by hearing. So once you heard the word, it, it did something to you. It changed you as a person, right? By the renewing of your mind that ye, that ye may prove what is 
that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Most High. Okay? So we changed our ways. Now we know. Okay, once we heard the word, it, it, it did something to us. It changed it, it changed our outlook on 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 life, period. First Peter chapter uh, second Peter chapter three verse one. This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you in both which I stir up your pure minds by the way of remembrance. So once you've heard these words, all right, you brothers and you sisters that are watching these lessons, what did it do to you? It stirred up stirred something up within your mind. And it seemed really nostalgic when you heard certain things like the name of the Lord and the, and the sentiment that the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans so-called are the actual Israelites written in, in the Bible. When you heard that, it, it, it changed something, it, the way you viewed the whole world. When you heard that the so-called white man was the Edomite, the enemy of, of life, and you heard that was in the Bible and you read the scriptures, it changed the way you looked at life. It actually brought a little bit, bit more, it's brought a lot more understanding. It kind of put everything in perspective for you when you heard it like that. I know it did that for me and, and for many other brothers. So I can imagine it would have done the same thing for you brothers and sisters that are watching. When you heard this truth, it changed something in you and, and, and you sought after more knowledge. You needed more. You needed to understand this. This is the way to go. It says, this is the way walk ye in it. Okay? So it says, um, Reading on, it says that ye may be mindful of the words that which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the holy apostle of the of the Most High of the Lord Yahweh Slakia. Let me read that again. That ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, right? You know, because we, you know, sometimes you may take the words of the prophets for granted. You know, that the, av the average American doesn't just go into the Bible and start reading Malachi and Isaiah and all these things like that. They don't really understand that. So they don't really take into consideration what these prophets were actually saying and that it actually applied to the time that we're living in right now. It's a future prophecy. Okay. And of the commandment of us, the holy apostles of the Lord and Savior. Right. You know, you don't, now you're mindful of these things. It goes on to say, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. And that's what the majority of our people say, and people in general. They look at us and they listen to what we got to say about the Bible, and what, what we say about end prophecy. And they look at us like, well, y'all been saying that for years and years and years, and we ain't there yet. Where is the promise of his coming? I thought you said that we would be out of here soon. I know you said five years ago that we'll be out of here in a couple of years. Here it is five years later. We're still here. What's going on? They don't They don't really understand that this isn't on our time. This is on the Lord's time. And all we are supposed to do is measure the times by the signs that the Lord shows us. The average person is, is impatient enough to do that. So what do they do? They get impatient and they just write it off as, as tomfoolery. Okay? It says... It says uh, for this they are willingly ignorant of. Right. They are willingly ignorant because we can sit here and break the scriptures down and bring out precept upon precept upon precept. Go into the Greek and the Hebrew and break things down so you can understand, show you pictures and, and everything you need. All right. But ultimately, you, you're just you're not going to get it because ultimately you're willingly ignorant. You don't want to get it. You, you want this world to continue on. You can't imagine life without... The way this world is continually, uh, constantly being run, all right. Without your technology and the so-called white man in power, you can't imagine a world without that. So when we try to tell you about a world without all that, you immediately, you immediately reject it. It says, "For they are willingly ignorant of that by the word of the Most High the heavens were of old." And the earth standing out of the water and into water, whereby the world that was then was being overflowed with water perished. Right. Because you remember the story of Noah and what happened? That world that he lived in, that world was completely destroyed by water. All right. It was flooded. The great flood. And you can hear about this story in the book of Genesis. All right. And you, even if you go into other cultures and you go into their ancient scrolls of, the, of these other cultures, these heathenistic cultures, they'll tell you the story about the great flood as well, too. It happened. Well, that was the first death. This is something that happened. Everybody on the earth died at that time and saved for eight souls. Noah, three of his sons, and all their wives. They all had one wife, so there's eight souls. Those are the only people that survived. Everybody else died. The Lord killed them. Okay? 
it says, so it, um, that word perish. Verse 7, but the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. So this world, which we're currently living in right now, which was the same world, world that Peter was living in, all right, is currently going on right now. This world is reserved unto fire. So, yes, death and destruction is coming, but it's not going to come by the way of a flood again. The, the, the Heavenly Father promised us that he wouldn't flood the earth like that again. But he ain't saying nothing about fire, so fire is coming. So that's how this world is going to end. It's going to end through fire. And how is that fire coming? Through a nuclear war. And so when you see all these different conflicts um, heating up across the earth today, this is leading up to the great day of judgment. All right. Um, I had something I wanted to get, but let me just keep reading. Verse 8. It says, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. It says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any of us should perish, but that we all should come to repentance. Right. So we have to keep in mind that this isn't on our times. So, so when we look at the prophecies happening on the earth, and you know, sometimes it takes years for these things to really show some fruit. Hey, this is all on the Lord's time. One day with the Lord is as, is as a thousand years down here in this dimension. So, it's real quick in the eyes of the Lord. But to us, it's generation after generation after generation that we're living through all this madness. And now it's starting to finally show that, okay, something's about to happen. But we have to be patient. Just like the Lord is patient with us, we have to be patient with the Lord. Because it's going to happen one way or another, whether we wait for it or not. We have no choice in the matter, really, at the end of the day. It says, verse 10, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, and which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right. So that day of the Lord, all right, is a day, it says, where the heavens pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. All right. That's just talking about a nuclear war, basically. All right. A nuclear strike upon Babylon the Great. This is basically prophesying that. All right. Where everything is just destroyed with fervent heat. Where everything just dissolves. Okay? With, with a loud noise. It says, The earth also in the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. All right. <clears throat> excuse me. All right. So, here it is. You know the, the prophecy, what the prophecies say and about America and about certain parts of the world and what's going to happen. You have a leg up on that understanding. Knowing that. Okay? That everything's going to be burnt up. Everything that you see before you, every, everything that you know and love before you, basically, is going to be destroyed. Knowing that, it says, what manner of persons ought ye to be in? <laughs> okay? Knowing that everything's going to be destroyed, how should we be conducting ourselves here on the earth? It says, in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of God. That's what we should be in. That's the mindset that we should be in. You're looking and hastening unto the coming of the day of Yahweh Shai because you know that before Yahweh Shai comes, there's going to be nothing but turmoil here on the earth. Right? It says, looking, at, uh, look, looking and hastening for the coming of the day of, the, of, of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Exactly. So, yeah, you know that these things are going to happen. What manner of person are you going to be in? You're going to be watching. You're going to be on your watchtower. Okay? On your post. Um, Mark 13. Verse. Let's see here. Verse 32. It says, but of that day. This is Yahweh I speaking. But of that day. What day? The day of judgment. Okay, the day of the Lord. But of that day. And that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. So only Yahweh knows when this is going to go down. Okay, not even Yahweh Shai knows right, what day it's going to be. He's going to get. He's basically going to get the the green light from the Father to come down and do it and, and and save the elect. All right, and uh, and everybody else outside of the elect is going to feel the wrath of Yahweh Shai and the angels.
The angels don't know. Yahweh Shai doesn't know. But the Father knows. And that day is set. Okay, we don't know that day. We are to what? We are to be watching for signs of that day. Let's keep reading. Mark chapter 13, verse 33. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. Right, you don't know when that time comes. So we ought to be watching and praying. So when it does, well, when we start seeing signs of that time, then we can prepare ourselves spiritually, right? Real quick, let's go to the book of 2nd Ezra 9th chapter. You know, we do this all the time. Today's no different. It's the same scriptures over and over again. This is the book of 2nd Ezra chapter 9 verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest parts of the sign pass, which I told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time where the highs will begin to visit the world which he made. So us as the watchmen, we need to be watching for signs. Okay, where do we watch these signs? How do, you know, we just go outside and look in the sky? No, not necessarily. No, use the technology that's been laid before you. You have this fucking device in your pocket that tells you everything in the world. Might as well use that. Okay, you can use your television, the news. Okay, use these things and you should be... Uh, um, you should have enough discernment to be able to see one is a bunch of bullshit that's being fed to you or you know if you have to pick the, the, the meat from the bone sometimes because sometimes you watch some of these news articles and there's a bunch of fluff in there you have to dig deep for the truth sometimes you have to go to alternative media we recommend you go to alternative media maybe like media from the Russians you know or across seas somewhere Al Jazeera you know those kind of watch what's see what they're saying okay see how they spin the same story that's being spin differently over here in the West. You have to do some diligent search to watch. Okay, go on the on the forums. All right, see, you know, see what see what the truthers are saying. And we have to understand. Okay, the Lord is showing us something. What does it mean prophetically? Okay, when we see these things, this is another sign getting us closer to the end to to the war of, of wars, the war to end all wars, man. World War Three, the, the third woe. Okay. It says, verse 3, Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars in the people of the world, then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. Okay, and we know that earthquakes have been on a rise, uh, uh, really as of recently, but, but really ever since we've been born. I was born in the 80s, and there's been many major earthquakes since then. Okay, and that was only 40-something years ago. That's a, that's, a, that's a trifle in the eyes of the Lord. Again, a day of the Lord is a thousand years. So what's 40 fucking years? Nothing. Okay, nothing. So we're, we're, we're you know, we see these things and they're speeding up in our time. All right, in the past 50, 60 years have been, you know, very, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, oh, there's a word. Active for the, you know, for lack of a better word. <laughs> a lot has been happening. You know, presidents have been assassinated. You know, wars have broken out over and over again. Lots of people have died. Okay? So, some, it's, it, earthquakes, major earthquakes, uproars of the people. People are pissed off at what's going on with the government. People are pissed off at what's going on with the with the climate. People don't, people don't, even, they're pissed off and they don't even know why they're pissed off. Some, some people are just pissed off because the TV tells them to be pissed off. But there, but there's uproars. It's clearly, <laughs> it's, it's, there's clearly uh, 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 a lot of tension in the world. and People aren't happy. What does the scripture say before I finish reading that? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, right here. Right there, Proverbs. It's gracious. Chapter 29, verse 2, it says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. And when you look at the way the world is right now, I mean, yeah, you can look around, you can see some people, you know, living it up or whatever the case is. But really, it's it's a bunch of bullshit. None of these people are happy. These are fake smiles that you really see on these people. They're not really happy. So, no, when you really scrutinize how the people are on this earth, they're not rejoicing. The people are upset. They're mad. They're sad. They're scared. Everybody's scared. Everybody's worried about what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day and the next day. What's gonna what what you know 
how they're gonna get through the summer, how they're gonna get through the winter, how they, are they gonna be able to pay their taxes, are they gonna be able to fucking pay rent this month or whatever? People are scared, man. You keep raise, they keep raising the rent and the prices and all these stuff out here, and it, it, it it's pretty much, you know, just entertaining yourself is almost un unobtainable to the average person here. So people are not really rejoicing anymore. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. So clearly the righteous aren't in authority because if they were, the people would be rejoicing, but they're not. What it says, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So that makes more sense. When you look at the world, people are mourning. People are scared. They're sad. They're, 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 they're lamenting. Why? Because of this guy that's ruling the earth right now, this asshole, this, this demon that rules the earth right now. Because of him. All right, the so-called white man, Esau, Edom, he's the wicked. He's the physical embodiment of the spiritual demon Satan on the earth. So you expect this to be pretty bad, and it's bad. Earth, you know, the, the way the earth is, is pretty fucking bad. Going back to 2nd Corinthians 9, verse 4, it says, Then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world hath the beginning and the end, and the end is manifest, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonders and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. So us, we have to be diligent and watch for these effects and signs. These are the tokens that the Lord is showing us. And if you are watching, you're not privy to these signs, it's going to go right over your head. You got to be watching, man. You know, and that's the job of the watchmen, the prophets. This is second second Ezra chapter five verse one. Nevertheless, as concerning the tokens, behold, the day shall come that they which dwell upon the earth shall be taken in great number, and the way of truth shall be hidden, and the land shall be barren of faith. Okay, and really, you see that's where we are right now. Now there is faith in the land because the elect is out here somewhere, and they're preaching and prophesying, and they believe in calling on the correct name. All right, but for the majority, the lion's share of these people out here, there's no faith in them, and it's all leading to their destruction. All right, and this is why we're here. We're here to remind you of these things. So let's go back into the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 33 again. It says, and this is Yahweh Shai speaking. Verse 33, take ye heed, watch and pray, for ye know not when the time is. All right, we don't know what day it is, as, as the scripture before that said. We don't know what day it is. I can't sit here and tell you that it's going to be August 15th, 2024, 2025, 2020. We can't tell you that. All we can tell you is that it's soon. What is soon? Soon could be a few weeks. Soon could be a few months. Soon could be a year and a half. Soon could be two years. Soon could be three years. Three years isn't that long. We hope it's not three years. We hope it's a few months from now. But either way you really look at it, it's really not that much time for America to, 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 to uh, gain traction again. At this point, it's looking like it's going to fall soon. It's looking like it's going to fall within the next few months. So if America falls in the next few months, when I say fall, I'm talking about basically a societal collapse, not destruction. It's going to be a societal collapse first, which is going to lead us into Jacob's trouble. Once we're in, once we're in Jacob's trouble, it's going to be a time frame where we're going to, we're going to, we're going to basically have to rely strictly off our faith in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. And that's where we're going to see who the Lord is truly dealing with and who the Lord is not dealing with. And then after a few months of that, who knows how long that's going to be, they're going to bring back order and they're going to force or not force. They're going to they're going to present the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast, which is written about in the book of Revelation, the 13th chapter, where it tells you not to get it. It tells you in the, in the 14th chapter, if you get it, you're going to have to pay the price by, by burning in a horrible fire. What do you think that fire is going to come from? That fire is going to come from a nuclear destruction. Um, let's read it real quick. Now I'll go back to Mark. Until the Spirit allows it. This is Revelation 13, verse or Revelation 14, rather. Verse 9, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast, who's the beast? Okay, the beast is this, really is this Western conglomerate. The United States, um, well, really, you want to say NATO. The NATO nations, uh, the Europe, the European Union nations, okay, that's part of the beast, and of course the United States, Canada, okay, that's part of the beast, and so they have a, a specific philosophy and a, sp a specific way of life that and how they rule, okay, and as you can see the way the people are, that's how 
That's how the government is, right? When you go into the book of Sirach, I know I'm all over the place. When you go into the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha, the 10th chapter, and the fourth verse, it says, no, the first verse, it says, a wise judge will instruct his people and the, and the government of a prudent man is well ordered. As the judge of the people is himself, so are his officers. Right. And what manner of man the ruler of the city is, such are all they that dwell therein. Right. So the, uh, just like the, the way the government is, is going to be the way the, the people think of that land. So the people, they're, they're, they're either on one side, the right or the left. I'm a I'm a conservative or I'm a liberal or whatever, you know what I'm saying? All right, and they have their that's what they worship. That's their side. I'm a I'm a strong, my family's a strong uh conservative family, have conservative values, and they have democratic liberal values, and that's how we run our family over here. It's straight America got the American flag and all that shit. That's you worshiping the beast. That's the beast, man. And the image, it goes on to say what? Going back into Revelation 6 of uh, 14 and and uh nine. It says, if any man worship the beast and his image, the image is basically the philosophies and the way of life that is pushed out through this Western society, such as democracy, such as love is love. Okay, you live, you know, if it feels good, do it. Do as thou wilt. Okay, do whatever the hell you want to do. We're the best. America's the best. You know, this is a bunch of bullshit. And that's how these people live. And that's, they, they believe that. Okay. So that's you worshiping the beast. You you voting, going voting every fucking other year. Okay, you worshiping these sports, these athletes. You going to the football game, you're painting your face the colors of the team, and you're wearing the fucking Viking horns. You're worshiping the beast, man. You're doing too much. It's okay to have a good time out here every now and then, but you're doing too much. You're worshiping this shit. Your team loses, you're you're mad. You're gonna what riot? You're gonna be pissed off. You can't talk to your family no more because your team lost the fucking Super Bowl. That's how these people are. Mad as hell, calling calling off for work, talking shit, fighting their friends. Okay, you know, you lost the game of Madden, you're taking it too fucking seriously. These people just worship this world. Okay, and I, I mean that's kind of a an extreme example, but you know, that's that's the ways of these people. Okay? Celebrity gossip, alright, uh, you gotta you gotta keep up with the Joneses, you know. Every other you changing your car, you you gotta have the newest clothes and all the you you want people to worship you. You constantly on social media seeking, uh uh, uh um um what you call it uh, uh um uh the likes and the in the in the in the views of of the world. You're doing too much, man. The Lord ain't tell us to do none of that shit. It says, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand. So when you go into that word mark, you're going to find the word karagma, okay, which is a stamp of servitude. If you go deeper into the word, you're going to find a word called karax in the Greek, which is basically going into the implement that's used to make said mark in the flesh. Okay, a, 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 a palisade or a, 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 we call it a, a, um, a stake, okay, a syringe, if you will. Okay, so it's talking about an RFID microchip, which is going to be implanted in the flesh. So you can use it to what? Buy and sell and to take part in society. That you need it. This is all going to happen before World War III. Okay? And of course, you got the brain chips as well, too. The Neuralink and the other one, I forget the name of it. Where, you know, you get the brain chip and then now you can, you can, you can control certain devices with your mind. Okay, if, if you were paralyzed, now you can walk again. It's a miracle. Okay, but if you get that, that's you getting the mark of the beast. It says, it says, verse 10, The same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. Okay, so this is a very poetic way of saying that you can be burned to death. It says, and, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. The Lamb is Yahweh Shai. Okay, so if you receive his mark and you have to willingly accept it, of course, if you do, then this is going to be your fate. You're going to die a horrible death in Babylon and that is going to come by the way of nuclear destruction. And so when you see all this, to this turmoil heating up on the other side of the earth, don't think that it isn't going to touch you on this side of the earth eventually. 
we're living in that time. It's not going to be something that your grandchildren are going to have to deal with. This is something that we all going to have to deal with in this time. Okay? And no, you don't want to hear that, but we're here to tell you this anyways because if we don't tell you, no one else is going to tell you, and then there's going to be no chance of you repenting. This is Matthew 24 and 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is Yahweh's very words. This is red letter. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. Okay, so when you hear, because right now we hear wars all the time, right? Just yesterday, the, the president of Iran was, he died in a helicopter crash. Could be foul play, could be an accident, who knows? Either way, it happened, and everybody's pointing the finger at this nation and that nation. Okay, this is going to lead up to another rumor of war. Okay, when you hear these things, and you see these things on the TV, on the internet, or in your everyday life, it says what? See that ye be not troubled. Don't get scared when you see these things. This is part of the story. It must happen, as it says here. For all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. It has to happen before we're at the end. end. We're at the end, but we're not at the end of the end. The end of the end is going to end by a nuclear war and by the salvation of the elect of Israel by Yahweh Shai's coming. We're not there yet. We're, before, we're right before that. We're at the precipice of that. So we're heading into a very turbulent time. So don't be troubled when you see these things. It's supposed to happen. It's going to happen whether you want it to happen or not. There's nothing you can do. There's no not enough um, picketing and and um, what do you call it a uh, protesting that anybody can do to stop it from happening. It's prophesied to it happen. It's already written in stone. Okay, sorry, we're just here to tell you. Okay, we're here to tell you these things. It's going to be more uh, turbulence to come. Okay, geopolitical and otherwise. This is the book of Second Ezra in the Apocrypha, chapter 16, verse 1. It says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia. Woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. And woe goes into destruction. Okay, so this is the prophet, you know, saying, you know, uh, destruction is coming. And he's giving out these nations. Okay, it says, Gird up yourselves with cloth of sack and hair, but well your children and be sorry, for your destruction is at hand. Okay, so in other words, get ready to mourn and, and lament because death and destruction is on the horizon. A sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you, and who may quench it? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away a hungry lion in the wood? Or may anyone quench the fire and stubble when it hath begun to burn? These are rhetorical questions. In other words, there's nothing you can do to stop the destruction that's coming. All right, the momentum is, is already gained too much momentum. It's prophesied to happen. It's going to happen. Okay, the best thing that we can do is brace ourselves for it rather than arguing with the prophets about it happening or not happening. It's going to happen whether you believe it's going to happen or not. We're just telling you it's going to happen because we like you. Okay, it's all love. It says, verse 7, May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. We're going to keep reading. It says, The mighty Lord sendeth the plagues. Right, the Lord sends the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? And there's no man on earth that can drive these plagues away. Whether it be the actual, you know, the pestilence. Or whether it be the famine that's going to come soon here in America. That's going to affect you and your household. Save you of the elect. Or what have you. The violence. Ain't no one going to be able to stop it, man. It says. Oh, I just lost my place. Verse 10. Uh, verse uh, 9. It says. A fire shall go forth from his wrath. From whose wrath? The Lord's wrath. And who is he that may quench it? And you know the fire that we're talking about, there's no quenching that fire. It's not like you can just get the fire department and, and quench the nuclear... Uh, no, no, that's ridiculous, absurd. Okay? that's There's, there's no help. Okay? No one's going to come and help Babylon. As a matter of fact, the majority of Babylon or America's allies are going to turn their back on America and also shoot arrows at her, America. You know, put that in your pipe and spoke it. That's going to happen. So all these um, NATO allies, eventually they're going to turn their back on the United States. The United States and Babylon are one and the same. 
when you use Babylon for the most part, when it's talking about it in a future tense, okay, about the destruction of Babylon, it's talking about the United States. It's a future prophecy. These, these, these scriptures are for us in this world, in this time period that we're in right now. Okay, so that's why we keep reading about Babylon. Babylon's talking about America. Okay, people don't believe that, but all right. So what if something I believe? All right. um, it says, it says, a fire shall go forth from his wrath, and who is he that may quench it? He shall cast lightnings, and who shall not fear? He shall thunder, and who shall not be afraid? The Lord shall threaten, and who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence? I mean, this is fucking insane. This is this is some violent shit. Okay. I mean, this is gonna happen. Yeah. I mean, this is happening now on a, in other parts of the world. But wait till it happens in America. It's a different. It's a, it's have a different feel to it now, right? Now it's happening over here. Hasn't happened yet. The point is coming. Verse twelve. The earth quaketh. And the foundations thereof The sea arises up with waves from the deep And the waves are of, it, of it are troubled And the fishes thereof also Before the Lord and before the glory of his power Verse 13 For strong is his right hand That bendeth the bow You know a bow and arrow Okay which is an ancient weapon Okay So it was a very popular weapon back in the days of Ezra Obviously so he was very familiar with a bow and arrow I would imagine Okay but he wasn't familiar with the visions that he was seeing. I'm going to keep reading. All right. It says, For strong is his right hand, the heavenly father's right hand, that bendeth the bow. The arrow, His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world. What the fuck does that mean? How is an arrow going to be shot from one end of the world to the other end of the world? It can't be. Okay, as um, that army ICBM specialist said um, on Saturday when he came up to the camp, he said, um, you know, because uh, the brothers asked him the same question. He said about, what, 200 meters, maybe an arrow can be shot from a strong archer. Okay, that's a far small cry from the ends of the earth. So what is this really talking about? And why does he keep mentioning fire and destruction? Because obviously this isn't talking about an actual bow and arrow. This is talking about something else that Ezra wasn't, wasn't familiar with. But when he saw the vision, he saw, the, he saw the, the missiles being shot from one end of the earth to the other, intercontinental. Okay? I mean, it's, it's clear to us. And it goes on to say, verse 14, Behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come unto, upon the earth. So... When these things happen, there's no turning them back. All right, it's gonna when when this war actually actually truly heats up for real, for real. When it turns nuclear, is no is there's no turning back. At that point, now we're waiting for our Lord to come and deliver us, the elect, if we be of that number. We're watching for the Lord now. Okay, so these things are gonna happen. And it's gonna happen soon. We're in that time. Otherwise, the prophets wouldn't have been risen up in these last days. This is Job chapter 20, verse, verse uh, 23. When he is about to fill his belly, who's the he? The so-called white man Esau, Edom, and his, and his rulership, his elite, okay? When they're about to uh, obtain their, their new world order on the earth, in other words, it says, God shall cast the fury of his wrath upon him and shall rain it upon him while he is eating. So when he's about to enjoy his new world order and his newfound rulership, uh, he has got the majority of the earth, uh, the population of the earth microchipped and he's ready to go. And, you know, this is when he's about to, to, to fill his belly. That's when the Lord's going to rain fire upon him and destroy him. It says, he shall flee from the iron weapon and the bow of steel shall strike him do, strike him through. Okay. The iron weapon, the bow of steel. What is that? Okay. It is drawn and cometh out of the body. Yea, the glittering sword cometh out of his gall. Terrors are upon him. All right. What is that glittering sword? What is the gall? Okay. It's talking about the the, the, the fiery 
nuclear missile coming up from out of the silos. All right. When you look it up, when you look up on the internet, you watch the nuclear come up out of the silos. That's what is that's the vision that's being saw here. Okay. And it's coming to rain destruction, right? Um, what's what's another one? I know I could keep reading that, but I want to end it here soon. Uh, let me see Revelation. This is 19. Let me see something. Let me see something. Mm -hmm. Man, what? Oh, uh, is in here somewhere? Maybe it's, it's Revelation 9. I, I'm sure it's 19. I think. Uh, bah, bah, bah. Let me just do this with the swiftness. Maybe it's over here. Maybe it is Revelation 9. Salakia Akim. Yeah, it is 9. This is Revelation chapter 9, verse. Uh, let's start at um, verse 17. I can start up a little bit for but let's start at verse. Start at verse uh, 18. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can. Yeah, let's start. At, let's let's see here. Let's start uh, Revelation chapter nine, verse 14. It says, uh, verse, verse 12, Salakia. Revelation nine, verse 12. It says, one woe is past, and behold. There come two woes more after, hereafter. Okay, so again, when I mentioned earlier, the, uh, the three, the third woe, that's the World War Three. So here it's talking about one woe is past, because if you read up, it's talking about World War One. And it says, and behold, there come two woes here more hereafter. So two more world wars are coming after the first one. So let's keep reading. It says, and the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar. Which is before the Most High, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And when you go into Revelation of seventh chapter, starting at the top, it says, And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living power, Yahushai. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power in their foreheads. In, a, in, in, in their foreheads, right. So in other words, those angels were being held back until the... the the uh the elect was sealed. The servants of God were sealed on the earth. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Okay, so when they are sealed, that's when you're gonna see the destruction come. Back in Revelation nine verse fourteen, it says saying it says saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So now those angels are loose. It says and the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. For to slay the third part of men. So they were prepared for a certain specific mo moment in our time to bring death and destruction upon the third part of men, which are the men, the, the sons of the wicked, which are the Edomites. This, this is what it's talking about. All right, the third part of men is the sons of the wicked, the Edomites. Reading on, verse 16. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand. So if you look, if if you Google two hundred thousand thousand, that goes in two hundred million, okay. And it says, and and those horsemen are what? It's not actual horsemen, okay. If you can go into the book of Joel, the second chapter, it kind of breaks it down a little bit. You gotta have the spirit of the Lord on you to understand it, though. It's talking about the the the, the it's talking about missiles, okay. It's gonna be a barrage of missiles that are gonna come and destroy America from from all over the earth, okay. And it says two hundred thousand thousand, so it's telling you is 200 million missiles okay whether it's that many or or you know just a lot you know we'll see okay but i believe it's going to be something like that that's going to be a, going to be a great destruction upon the earth upon babylon the great imagine that 200 million missiles just plummeting here in man you, it's hard to really fathom that man and we're talking about very strong destructive missiles 
It's not like Fat Man and Little Boy back in back in World War II. We're talking about something far more deadlier than that. And one missile can have several dozen warheads in it. Okay? So it goes on to say, it was says, and the number of the army of the horsemen, which are again are the missiles, were 200,000, 200 million. And I heard the number of them. Verse 17, and thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplate of fire and, and jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions. And out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. So what do you think he's seen? This is the Apostle John. He's trying to break this down in the sense that, you know, the, the reader can understand. But really, this is a very dark saying. He's describing nuclear warheads. He's describing missiles. Okay, he just doesn't know what he's seeing. He just sees what he's he sees what he sees and he's writing down what he the best way he can describe it. But he doesn't really understand what he's seeing. He doesn't get it. So he's writing it down in hopes that th those in the future can actually uh, decipher this. And so we have deciphered it. We understand he's talking about missiles. It's clear to us now. It says, By these three was the third part of men killed, by fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. Okay, those warheads. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues Oh, I, I, skipped a, I skipped a verse. Verse 19. It says, For their power... Let's read verse 18 again. It says, "For It says, By these three was the third part of men killed, by fire and by smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth. Right. In the warhead. Okay? That's where the, that's where the destructive power is in the warhead. It's in the, it's in the, in the head part. So it's calling it the mouth. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. When you look at the tail of a nuclear of a nuclear uh, missile, all right, what's is propulsion? It's a propulsion system. All right, is she fire? I mean, it's hard. I mean, it's, it's easy to explain it, but I can already see y'all. I can feel y'all looking at me and you know, do the, do your screen like what the fuck is this nigga talking about? That's what it's talking about. I'm just trying to explain it the best I can, just like the Apostle John was trying to explain it to us. All right, it does sound crazy, but this is what he's talking about. Okay, he says, this is in a Bible. I'm reading the Bible. It says, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. So again, the destructive power in their tail, in their mouth and the propulsive, propulsive power in the tails. For their tails were like unto serpents. All right, you look it up. You know, look up, look up Google or YouTube, you know, go on to YouTube, type in nuclear launch and watch the missile go up and you'll see the tail, the smoke, the tail of the smoke and the fire is there. That's what, he, he, that's what he saw. He saw that. And we see it today and you just don't want to acknowledge the fact that this is what he saw. This is what he saw. He saw this. Okay, look it up. After this video, go look it up and see what I'm talking about. It's crazy. It says, For their tails were like unto serpents and had heads and with them they do hurt. Okay, it brings... Pain, destructive power. They hurt, brings death. Okay, I mean, I don't ask explain it. That's what it is. That's what that means. That's what, it, that's what that means. Okay, it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a destruct a destructive power coming soon. And we'll end with this in the book of Malachi. Um, oops, Malachi chapter four verse one. For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea. And all that do wicked, wickedly shall be stubble, right? So that means the sons of the wicked, okay, the third part of man. And of course, two thirds of our own people, when you go into the book of Zechariah, the 13th chapter, okay, it talks about two thirds of the people dying in the land, but one third being saved, okay? All that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, save the Lord of hosts, Lord of armies, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch so they'll never be be able to rise up again and do wicked wickedness on the earth ever again so with that i'm gonna give all praise honor and glory to you how about hashem you shy hashem rachak watash and also want to give double honors unto the apostles and elders of gms and salute to you i came out there pushing the word out in truth and sincerity